Alright, welcome to another AQA AS Canvas video. Uh, this is going to be the last, technique. yeah, this is the last AQA AS Canvas video that I should be making. Uh, I've done exam questions on other topics before, so this should be the last one. And it's the last uh, year one in organic um, paper that I'll be doing. I've done periodicity, I've done group two, uh, and now I'm doing group seven, the halogens. Um... Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go through this video. As usual, I'll leave the link in the description to this video. Um, so to this uh, this question paper, uh, it's from the same size work from before. Uh, physics maths tutor. There's no questions that I'm leaving out. So, um, yeah, go to the link in the description. Try to answer the paper. Um, or don't. It's, it's just this is just a video to help you. So I guess you know do what you want really. Uh, but I'll be going through the the, the questions in this paper in case you need any help. Um, this 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 video I expect this video to be quite long given the fact that this is a ninety eight mark paper. Um, as I said, if you don't need to go through every single question, this just to you know if you want to do all, all the questions, it's good. It's good practice, of course. You know you need to take responsibility for your own actions now, so if you don't have to just know what you need for your exam. All right, but I'm going through this. So this is ninety. I'm going to do this in ninety eight minutes, even though in the real exam. Uh, it, you probably get a bit more than that, close to two hours, really, if you're getting 98, um, 98 minutes. I don't know how many, like, 10, is it 10% extra or 20% extra minutes? Um, yeah, but anyway, I'll, I'll be doing that, um, yeah, so as, as I said, I, I'm, I'm gonna go into paper, I'm gonna stop talking, because I know that's gonna be adding more minutes than I actually need to, but as I said before, if this, this is gonna be a very long video, um, but only, I'm only doing this to, to, for the people that, uh, was struggling on a particular question and they need help with it I'm just you just just skip to the part of the video that you need help with right so um, don't feel like you need to look at this with me and, and go if you're struggling with question 10 or whatever uh, for example um, then just go to that part but I'm just gonna go for every every single part here all right so three two one I'll start that now Alright, so this question is about chlorine. Chlorine has a low boiling point because the forces between the molecules are weak. Explain how the forces arise between molecules of chlorine. So explain how these uh, weak uh, these weak dipole forces form. Really, that's that's what it's in in uh, chlorine. So because it's unevenly distributed. That's how so I'd say. Three marks. So the unevenly distributed. Atoms distributed to chlorine atoms uh, to, yeah, so unevenly distributed um, uh, chlorine atoms means that there will be uh, an imbalance in electron density in one molecule so it'll be in So leads to an imbalance in electron density in one molecule establish it which would establish uh, a temporary dipole Or I'd say the second part here to just go say it induces uh, uh, it establishes a dipole or induces a dipole in local surrounding molecules, local surrounding Cl2 molecules. And then the temporary dipoles attract. Um, so these temporary dipoles between the molecules would then attract, but, it's, but in particular, is there's partially negative and partially positive. Um, so there'll be one, one cell be partially positive, and one cell be partially negative. Um, so I say there's a leading 
to a partial attraction between the partially negative and partially positive. atoms and that's how you get the dipole dipole forming it I think we'll call it a temporary dipole temporary dipole bond So, give an equation for the reaction of chlorine with water. Give a reason why chlorine is added to drinking water. So, uh, uh, we already know this one. CO2 plus uh, H2O goes to form uh, HClO plus HCl. Uh, and then, why is it? Give a reason why chlorine is added to drinking water. Um, The reason is just to kill bacteria, really. In, I'd, say, I'd personally say in low concentrations, it kills bacteria. But it just says give a reason why chlorine is added to... I said, you know, I would say, actually, in low concentrations... It's... I wouldn't say effective at killing bacteria. That's way too long. I could just say it kills bacteria. In low concentrations, it kills bacteria. That's all, that's all I need to say for that. Right, chlorine reacts with cold aqueous sodium hydroxide in the manufacture of bleach. Give an equation for this reaction. So Cl2 plus uh, NaOH goes to form... Actually, it's two NaOH. Maybe this NaClO plus... It's cold, isn't it? Yeah, cold. NaClO plus um, NaCl plus H2O. Yes. All right, so which pair of solutions when mixed together, when mixed reacts to form a dark brown solution? Well, that just can't happen. Dark brown solution Sodium bromide and then wait that can't happen anyway because that's just, that's a heavier than that's so no um that can happen but I won't give you a dark brown solution I'd say that this one is sodium so does I two form a brown solution I think it does. I have to double check that one still. Well, I'll double check. Um, this question is oh, wait, no. Some solid so sodium halides are reactive with concentrated sulfuric acid. Which solid halide doesn't produce a sulfur containing gas as one of the products? Oh, this one easily. Doesn't produce, yeah, easily that one. All right, so uh, which question is, is about group seven chemistry? Sorry, this question is about group seven chemistry. Give an equation for the reaction of, so of solid sodium bromide with concentrated sulfuric acid to form bromine. Say one observation that we made during this reaction. Um, I always do the half equation for this. So I always, I, I always do the ionic equations. You can just do the ionic equations. So I just do that here. Two uh, Br minus goes to form Br two plus two electrons because Br minus is getting um, oxidized. Uh, brom when you're talking about bromine, you do the SO2. You always, you, I mean, that's generally what they're looking for here. So H2SO4, SO2, um, four H2Os, you bind the oxygens first. Um, eight here. Eight here, so I go for... Why do I go for two? Anyway, there's four H2O's here. I go for two H2O's here, sorry. 
that's four. Yeah, and then that's just um, plus two H plus. I'm about to say because I know it's only two H plus. All right, cool. Uh, those cancel out. So two Br minus plus H two SO four plus two H plus. Uh, goes to form Br2 plus SO2 plus 2H2O. Yeah, make sure you do, do, do that properly. One observation I'd say, uh, well, you're forming Br2, which is kind of like a gas solid kind of. I've already shown you a video of what gas of what it looks like, right? So it's a, um, it's I'd say an orange. It's always it's always considered to be orange brown. So I say an orange slash brown uh fumes is formed fume evolves as you say but it is kind of liquidy it's, it's half liquid half gas really uh you've, you've already seen what it looks like but yeah um actually, it should allow a solution though but knowing them i'll say fume all right a solution that is thought to contain chloride ions and iodide ions is tested. Uh, can you see that perfectly? Just trying to make sure that you guys can see that really. Um, yeah. A solution that is thought to contain chloride ions and iodide ions is tested. Dilute nitric acid is added to the solution. Aqueous silver nitrate is added to the solution. Uh, a pale yellow precipitate forms. Uh, excess dilute um, aqueous solution. So, a excess dilute aqueous ammonia is added to the mixture some of the precipitates dissolve and dark yellow precipitates remains give a reason for each for the use of each reagent uh explain the observation give an equation for each reaction okay so dilute nitric acid is added to the solution so the use of nitric acid is just to uh so nitric acid removes impurities forming with with the silver nitrate so uh so that's the first thing i talk about there so Say to remove carbonate impurities, carbonate impurities uh, forming with the silver nitrate. I say forming, reacting with the silver nitrate is probably better way. Uh, and that would give a false positive result. For silver nitrate or silver carbonate. Yeah. So nitric acid part is the car. Um, Aqueous silver nitrate added to the solution. Uh, silver nitrate is just used to test which uh, colored precipitate forms uh, that determines the halide that's present. Uh, that's why I just say that. that. I'm not going to use bullet points here because it's actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll use bullet points here just because it makes it more clearer. But there's not much space here. So silver nitrate. is used to test uh which i say i i i yeah which color which colored precipitate forms form yeah forms um that ultimately that kind of determine the halide present that determines the halide present if you can't read my handwriting i always say it out loud so the silver nitrate is used to, to test uh which colored precipitate forms that determines the halide present so i say that's done um so give a reason for each reagent that's been used explain the observations a pale yellow precipitate forms. That would be cream precipitate. Um, 
So cream precipitate. Well, if it's no, no, if it's a pale yellow precipitate, then it has both iodide ions and chloride ions back in it. So I'll say I wouldn't call it a cream precipitate. Uh, the pale yellow precipitate. is due to AgCl and AgI forming, being formed. I write the equations here. Ionic equations, it says always the ionic equations. So uh, Ag plus, um, plus Cl minus, goes to form AgCl, uh, Ag plus plus I minus goes to form AgI, and so some precipitates dissolve in dark yellow precipitates remains, they use excess, they use dilute aqueous ammonia to the mixture, so that's because um, the precipitates are difficult to see, so the precipitates I say difficult to see, difficult to determine its colours. The precipitates are difficult to decipher to or determine colour. Do they use dilute ammonia? Yeah, dilute ammonia uh, dissolves. Uh, AgCl. Uh, so only, say, so but not AgI. So only silver iodide. Silver iodide, which is yellow precipitate, remains. To here white precipitate you can just write it like this it doesn't have to be so formal because uh, in chemistry as long as you sh show a way that you're understanding uh, what the question is asking you don't have to be so formal I'm just, I'm just saying showing you here the equation the ionic equation and then the precipitate next to it the examiner will understand what you mean so don't put PPT for for precipitate write down the actual write down precipitate um, and I have to do this equation, right? So it'll be, um, oh, you actually haven't done this yet. I haven't shown you this. So uh, if you don't know how to answer this, then it will, it will make sense for you. But, um, uh, I, you know, I'll just go through it anyway. It would be for bron with AGI, right? Ionic equation. So it should be AG plus plus 2 NH3 goes to form. Ag silver diamine. Yeah, so this is a more of a transition metal thing, which is a year two thing. So I'm not expecting people to get to get this, but um, yeah, that that's the equation for that. But um, you're not expected to know that. All right, so uh, this question is about group seven metals. Also, group seven metals. Why am I talking group seven metals? Group seven elements uh, and their compounds. So chlorine is used to treat uh, water, even though it's toxic to humans. Give one reason why water is treated with chlorine. Explain how chlorine is added to water, even though it's toxic. And give a reason for the reaction of chlorine with cold water. So, so give one reason why water is treated with chlorine. That's the first part here. To kill bacteria. In low concentrations. Actually, no, I could just say to kill bacteria, really. Because the next part is, is explaining the concentration thing. In low concentrations, uh, 
chlorine isn't toxic. So in low, it, basically in low concentration, chlorine is toxic, but in low concentrations, it's it isn't toxic. So in low concentrations, uh, chlorine isn't toxic. And the thing that they always ask you to, they want to say is that is to say that the the benefits outweigh the the drawbacks or the 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 risk. So chlorine isn't toxic. Um, it's a low concentration chlorine isn't toxic, so the benefits. Done. Outweigh. The drawbacks. I say drawbacks is probably another better way of saying it, but um, I think of another word. I can think of that. And then give an equation for the for the. Give an equation for the reaction of chlorine with cold water. Is not to do that one there. Chlorine with cold water, no problem. And see, once you know how to use questions, it's much easier for you to. Um, you have to like think about writing that equation. You just know it. Uh, solid sodium iodide reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to form iodide, iodine, and sulfur in a redox reaction. Give a half equation to show the conversion of iodide ions to iodine. Give a half equation to show the conversion of sulfuric acid to sulfur, and then give an overall equation for a redox reaction. And this is all we do, I generally do anyway, so they just make you do it in steps, which is nice, but I've already done this usually in steps. And identify one other sulfur containing reduction product form when solid sodium. Iodide reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid, and yeah, so um, that's the question there. Half equation for the conversion of iodide ions to iodine. Um, that should be just uh, two i minus goes to form. We messed that up right there. Two i minus goes to form i two plus two electrons. A half equation for the conversion of sulfuric acid to sulfur. Um, I can just do that. Always do that here, just in case. H2SO4, sulfur, 4H2O, so that's plus 6H plus, plus 6E minus, yep, yes, H2SO4, plus 6H plus, 6 electrons goes to form S plus 4H2O. Give an overall equation for the re for this redox reaction. Now remember that the electrons need to be balanced. The electrons aren't balanced here, so you have six electrons on this side. The good thing is that we've shown here that this is a reduction and this is an oxidation. Now we need to balance the electrons. Now that uh, so that has two electrons, that has six. How can we get to the same like terms? We can times this by three, and they both have six electrons. So if I times that by three, then it'll be three. Oh, what's this? That'll be times that by three. Be six i minus goes to form 3i2 plus um, 6 electrons uh, and therefore we just add that to this side here 6i minus plus h2so4 so this is this is in, in the shot yeah 6i minus plus 6h it should be 6h plus uh, is it 6h plus is H2SO4 3I2 plus S plus 4H2O yeah All right, six i minus plus six H plus plus H2SO4 goes from 3I2 plus S plus 4H2O Identify one other sulfur containing reduction product formed when solid sodium iodide reacts with concentra concentrated sulfuric acid. You can form H2. You have either or S. You can form SO2 or H2S. I'll just say H2S. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You can pick um, the other, either or, really. Uh, a student completes an experiment to determine the percentage by mass of sodium chloride and a mixture of sodium. I'm not really paying attention on my own. Sorry. Uh, a student that comp completes an experiment to determine the percentage by a mass of sodium chloride and a mixture of sodium chloride and sodium iodide. A student used this method 600 milligrams of mixture were dissolved in water to form a solution. 
an excess of silver or aqueous silver nitrate added to the solution, and this forms a precipitate containing silver chloride and silver iodide. Excess dilute ammonia solution is then added to the precipitate, the silver chloride dissolves. Okay, then the silver iodide is filtered off from the solution and then it's washed off and dried. The mass of the silver iodide is obtained from 115 grams, um, milligrams. Uh, silver nitrate added to the solution is just why excess is used. You're using, okay, that's just an easy question. You see, sometimes with these questions, you can just see right away that you don't need to actually read all of this. You can just go and look what the question is because it hasn't really got to do with any of that. Saying why is silver nitrate used in excess? Um, and that's just to make sure that all the halides, um, they precipitate. Well, silver nitrate, all it does, right? You just want to see why, what does silver nitrate do? It's cause, it causes the, the, the halides to precipitate as silver, as silver salt, salt halides, right? If you're, so if you're doing an excess of it, you're just making sure that all the halides would um, precipitate um, from the solution. So, uh, so just to make sure... All halides in the solution precipitate out. Just making sure that this is in, in the shot. All right, cool. So, uh, calculate the amount of moles of silver iodide obtained. Um, 350 or 315 milligrams first of all uh, is equal to 0 0.315 grams just divide that by a thousand so yeah divide that by a thousand uh, moles of silver iodide moles of silver iodide um, just mass of the MR it's one is it how many marks is this just, just work out the moles yeah that's just one more question just, yeah one more question um, yeah, zero point three one five over two hundred and thirty four point eight. Simple one mark question. Um let me get my calculator here. One point three four times ten to the power minus three. Now this question is I mean, I assume a lot of people have already answered this question correct correctly. I don't think it, Many people have gone to look at this question and say, I need help on this. If you don't know how to do this, then, um, yeah, that's a bit of a worry. You can have off days, but hopefully you know how to just work out the moles. Yeah. Calculate, so calculate using your answer to part D, the mass in grams of sodium iodide in the mixture. Um, this is a, look at the mass in grams of, oh, just, moles is equal to mass over the MR, mass is equal to moles times by the MR, mass of salt, oh, that's a silver iodide, um, Well, I just wait. Let me just write this equation here, just in case, to make sure that I have the same um, silver nitrate, right? And that goes to form silver iodide plus, yeah. So okay, it's um, it's still a one to one mole ratio. Just making sure. Um, so the mass of sodium iodide is equal to. Uh, was it 1.34 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3 i just use the answer button anyway 1.34 3 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 multiplied by 149.9 0 0.201 grams 0 0.201 grams yeah they want it in grams anyway so 0 0.201 grams uh calculate using an, an answer to part e the percentage biomass of sodium chloride in the mixture um it's just the biomass then it'd just be 0 0.6 minus uh of what's it of sodium chloride in the mixture yeah it's, it's using sodium chloride and sodium iodide right yeah so
0 0.6 minus 0 0.201 over 0 0.6 uh, yeah, so it times by 100, should be times by 100 because it's a percentage, and that's just it really. 0 0.6 minus the answer over 0 0.6 times by 100, 66.5% really. If you're doing it to three significant figures, 66.5%. What's the lowest number of significant figures? I'm using the question. Three. Yeah, free, free, yeah, free, so that's, that's, that's right. Uh, which property increases down group seven? Boiling point. Definitely not that, definitely not. That definitely wouldn't increase. Ability to oxidize. It oxidize a given reducing agent. Wait, wait, ability... Oh, it'll be able to lose electrons better, yes. Oh, if it's oxidizing a reducing agent, it means it's being reduced. So no. Yeah, just that it's sometimes you have to just double check these make sure you but usually if you get the right answer, it's fine. Question seven. Which equation shows a redox reaction that occurs that doesn't sorry? Which equation shows a redox reaction that does not occur? Um, that's heavier than this, so that can't work. I2 is heavier than KB, so that, uh, than the bromide line, so that can't work. Uh, this question is about sodium halides. State what is observed um, when silver nitrate solution is added to the sodium fluoride solution. State what is observed when silver nitrate solution is added to. Oh, there's no, there's no observable reaction because it, it, um, silver fluoride uh, instantly dissolves again. It's really soluble. It dissolves for it back in again. So I would say no observable reaction. There's no precipitate formed. Instantly it really dissolves again. Uh, uh, stay one observation when solid sodium chloride uh, reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. Sodium chloride. Oh, we form HCl. Observation will be if uh, HCl gas forms a white misty fumes. So white misty f fumes form. State the role of the chloride ions in this reaction. No, wait. Give an equation for this reaction, firstly. Uh, between the sodium chloride and the concentrated sulfuric acid, no problem. NaCl plus H2SO4 goes to form NaHSO4 plus HCl. Now, there's no. This isn't a redox reaction, so I can't say that it acts as a reducing agent because uh, see the role of the the chloride ions because. People would think this right and then go to say, but this isn't a redox reaction, so there's no, re there's no reduction oxidation, there's no change in oxidation state, so the chloride ions are losing electrons. If it's losing electrons, I believe that is a Lewis base. If it's donating electrons, that's a Lewis base. Yes. So it's acting as a base. Have I gone through? No. I don't believe I've gone through through bases and acids and bases. Did it acid and base for year one? No, I don't think so. But yeah, it, it's, it's just what uh, if they lose electrons as, as a base. That's what it bases do. They donate electrons. Uh, given equation for the redox reaction between solid sodium bromide and concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, explain the oxidation state. Explain using oxidation states why this redox reaction occurs. Um, so yes, yeah, so you should be able to do this quick, quite quickly. Uh, we've done this pretty much before. Two Br minus plus H two SO four plus two H plus. You can do the ionic equation um, as well as the normal equation because if anything. The, the ionic equation is more accurate, if I'm being really honest, but 
um, that you can just do the normal equation if you're not comfortable with this. But I just do the ionic equation because it's easier for me to do. Uh, explanation. So explain using oxidation state why this is a redox reaction. Because uh, bromine's oxidation state is going from minus 1 to 0. So it's being oxidized. Yeah. So first of all, bromine's... Bromine's oxidation state changes from minus one to zero. So BO2, so bromine to so bromide ions is being oxidized and the sulfur in H2SO4 changes oxidation state. From I think it's usually plus six. I think it's usually plus six, right? So it's H two S O four is going from that's X. That's two. And that's minus eight. That's minus six. So X minus six. So that's plus six. Going from plus six to S O two here, which is um, X minus four. That's plus, and then. X is equal to plus four. It's going from plus six to, to plus four. From plus six to plus four. So it's being reduced. All right, so say what, say what is observed when aqueous, chlor aqueous chlorine is added to sodium bromide solution. Give an ionic equation for the reaction. So get what's the aqueous chloride is added to sodium. Or if wait. It should form a brown solution, right? Because if you have sodium uh bromide. Because let me just write let me write the equation first, because you're, for, you're forming Br2. So I'd say, a, a, uh, I think it's usually like a brown orange solution forms. I say brown slash orange solution forms. Uh, I think that's, yeah. Well, anyway, let me just do this. So, uh, ionic equation firstly. So CO2 plus, uh, well, this is chlorine, right? So Cl2 goes to form uh, two Cl minus plus two electrons. Uh, the bromide ions, you already know, it's going to be the bromide. It's sodium bromide, but really it's the bromide ions. So two Br minus goes to form Br2 plus... That's wrong here. Sorry. Two, two E minus plus Cl2 goes to form two Cl minus and two Br minus plus... Two Br minus goes to form Br2 plus two electrons. Remember the bromide ions being oxidized, the CO2 is being reduced, the electrons have to be on opposite sides, but they cancel each other out. So CO2 plus 2Br minus goes to form 2Cr minus plus Br2. Yeah, and that's the brown solution form, brown orange solution, uh, which, which shows the major, major product form when chlorine reacts with cold to dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide, NaClO plus NaCl. What's the best oxidizing agent? So best at being reduced. Gaining electrons, F2 should be the best at gaining electrons. It's the most electronegative. That wouldn't be. Because that's um, more, more negatively charged. So it would be repelling electrons. Which statement is correct about uh, reaction involving halide ions? Uh, sodium chloride forms uh, chlorine when... Oh, that's just wrong. That's just wrong. 
sodium chloride forms um, chlorine when added to brom. BO2 is heavier, so it can't be. Uh, sodium bromide forms bromine uh, when added to concentrates of rick acid. Yes. Yes. I'd go, I'd, I'd go as far as saying, like, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, from the equation, we've already done that equation, so that's, that is correct. Sodium bromide forms... Sorry, what am I talking about now? Which statement um, isn't correct about the transient properties of hydrogen halides from HCl to hydrogen iodide? Um, the, not true. So it's not correct. So what's the boiling point decreases? It would increase because iodine is, is hey, that's uh, the iodide ion is a lot much larger ions would form more van der Waals molecular forces right so it, sh it should be this one here or at least stronger bonds at least. Uh, this question is about wait let me just make sure this is um that's true that's true that's true yeah. Uh, this question is about uh, some group 7 compounds. Solid sodium chloride reacts with um, concentrate sulfuric acid. Give an equation for the reaction. It's a pretty easy, um, pretty easy reaction here. I don't know why I decided to do these exam papers like I like really late at night when I'm tired. It's just not a good thing to do. I always do them. Alright. Alright, uh, so give an equation for the reaction between that and that. Fine. We'll see the role of the sulfuric acid in this reaction. Um, it just acts as an acid, really. Because, it's just, again, it's not, it's not a redox reaction, so it just acts as an acid. I don't think you have to go start saying a Lewis acid or anything. Just say it acts as an acid, it should be enough. Fumes of sulfur dioxide are formed when let's see it for time. For time we still got enough time. Fifty seven minutes. Fumes of sulfur dioxide are formed when solid so when sodium bromide reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. For this reaction, give an equation, give one observation, uh state role of the sulfuric acid. So two Br minus plus uh two H plus plus H two SO four goes to form um SO2 plus 2H2O plus Br2. Um, observation we would see a brown slash orange fume being formed. Sulfuric acid was well, going from plus six here to plus four, so it's being reduced. So it's being it's an ox acting as an oxidizing agent, acts as an oxidizing agent. Uh, so chlorine reacts with hot aqueous sodium hydroxide, as shown in the uh, the equation uh, there. 3CO2 plus 6 NaOH goes to form NaCl03 plus NaCl plus 3H2O. Give oxidation state of chlorine and NaCl03 and NaCl. So it means this is pretty, pretty easy again. Um, plus 1. So 1 plus X uh, minus 6. Uh, X is equal to minus 5. So X, X minus 5 equals 0. So X is equal to plus 5. And then... Uh, x minus x plus one x is equal to minus one. All right. Stay in terms of what redox. What happens to chlorine in in the reaction in part C? It's being both reduced and oxidized. So we call this as a chlorine is being disproportionated. Chlorine is being 
portionated. Solution Y contains two different negative ions. To a sample of solution Y in the test tube, a uh, student adds silver nitrate solution, then an excess of dilute nitric acid, finally an excess of concentrated uh, ammonia solution. Uh, the observation after each reaction, uh, so the observation after each addition are recorded in the table. So and so, give the formulas D, E, and F. Give an ionic equation for for the solution for the. Oh, it's a long day. Give an ionic equation to show the formation of E. Give an equation for to show the conversion of D into G. So. Silver nitrate, excess dilute nitric acid, finally in excess of concentrate, concentrated ammonia solution. Okay, let's do it right. And then uh, D for cream, cream precipitate containing compound D. So that must be um, AG silver bromide. E. So after the silver nitrate solution, same common as D and E and excess solution so they convert so cream precipitate D all right, and bubbles of F confused here two different negative ions oh uh, carbonate ion because then you would still form CO2 here so then if, if you formed a silver um, carbonate and then she reacted that with the nitric acid because carbonate is when they react with nitric acid, they form so CO2 will get released and that, that, that'll be the bubbles of gas with CO2. That's why I, I think it is. It surely is that. Unless it's the... That makes sense to me. I, uh, I don't know, I mean, because... Then you, how, how would you get bubbles or anything else? I think that's, that's the right answer. I'm going to go for the mark scheme at the end, by the way. So, in case I'm wrong, um, yeah, I'll go for the mark scheme. Ionic equations to form E. Alright. Okay, so. 2AG. 2AG plus. Plus. Um. CO3 2 minus goes to form AG2 CO3. Alright, the equation shows the conversion of D into G. A colorless solution containing complex ion G. Right, so this is the this is the thing that I told you that you probably won't know because it's a year two topic. Um yeah, for, uh, complex ions are, are more of a year two thing when you come on to transition metals, when you do inorganic chemistry year two. Um, but, yeah, I'll just do that there. Alright. Oh, a long question. Actually... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go in through the the um, the it, it, um, I can't really speak multiple multiple choice questions because it's just easier. If I look at this and it looks long, I just go through multiple choice questions just to make me feel a bit happier. Uh, so say which statement is correct about the reaction between concentrated sulfuric acid and solid sodium bromide? I will come back to this question, but just for the sake of just getting through, because I'm just kind of getting tired from all this. Um, which statement is correct about Reaction between concentrated sulfuric acid and solid sodium bromide. Um, two beyond my no, it's not being reduced. It's being oxidized. Hydrogen bromide sulfur. Nope. Sulfuric acid acid. Yes, that's definitely true. Which is the best technique uh, to remove the silver chloride that forms when aqueous silver an aqueous solution of silver nitrate. And sodium chloride reacts. Filtration. If you get because you get a precipitate, so I'd say filtration. Uh, which statement about acetine is correct? Um, I'd say. Uh, 
So yeah, so as seen has a greater electric negativity than bromine. No, to bromine no, because if the direct affinity decreases, astine is better oxidizing agent than bromine it means it's getting reduced. So no, uh, astine is a greater but yes, we just would larger not combat. Which species is not produced uh, by rerox? Oh wait, astine is greater. No, that's definitely wrong. Uh, as which species is not produced by rerox reaction between solid sodium iodide and concentrated sulfuric acid? Which species is not produced by real reaction between solid sodium iodide and cause These are all formed, so it's easily this one here. No, careful with these questions when they say not, because they they kind of uh they can catch you out if you don't read it uh, carefully. More longer questions, so I'm just gonna go back to this here. All right. I actually saved time doing that question. Actually, I I, I I answer those questions more quickly than the one, two, three, four. I did that in just two minutes. So that's all right there. So separate unlabeled solid samples of free anhydrous uh, sodium compounds are provided for a student to identify. These compounds are known to be sodium carbonate, sodium fluoride, and uh, sodium chloride, but it's not known which sample is which. Um, so separate unlabeled solids. So fluoride, chloride. Outline a logical sequence of test tube reactions that students would carry out to identify which of these compounds include the observations students would expect to make. Give equations including state symbols for the reactions that um, that would take place. I should have brought my highlights with these. So including state symbols. The first thing I would do is that I would add nitric acid to all three test tubes, and then I would uh, I'd add, add nitric acid to all three test tubes, and then add silver nitrate. So add nitric acid to all three test tubes. And then add silver nitrate. So silver, yes, yes, silver nitrate. That's what I'd first do. And then so with the with this um sodium fluoride. Sodium chloride. Okay, so sodium chloride will be all right down here. Sodium chloride be converted into uh, silver chloride and form a white precipitate. And also called and sodium fluoride will show no observable reaction. As it's being converted to so to silver fluoride. All right, there. And then what's this? Uh, I started two there, and then, well, actually, silver, when, when, sodium carbonate is a carbonate. That when that reacts with nitric acid, it will have effervescence of gas. So, um, 
yeah, I could just say that um, silver carbonate will produce an effervescence of gas. as well as fizzing. Which really is what effervescence really is, but I mean as well as fizzing when reacted with H when reacted with nitric acid. So um I write up the equation. So sodium chloride I said so it's A G equations so silver nitrate yeah so yeah I should think about the, the, the state because it says include state symbols the sodium chloride I mean if this is meant to be in it says solid samples of sodium chloride, so uh, this would be aqueous plus sodium chloride, which is solid. Yep, sorry, my mind, my mind kind of um, wandered there. That's solid. AgCl solid plus NaNO3 aqueous. AgNO3 aqueous plus sodium fluoride so, I mean this is to be honest very it's not going to really precipitate so it's not going to show anything there plus sodium nitrate And then um, sodium carbonate with nitric acid, so sodium carbonate Na2CO3 solid plus nitric acid goes to form or I'll be definitely aqueous goes to form sodium nitrate firstly sodium nitrate definitely CO2 is getting released CO2 and then plus H2O uh, does that balance out? we have two of these so then you have to have two of these as well hydrogens Two, two, sodiums two, nitrogens two. Yes. Forty one minutes left to do four more pages. Oh, this looks really long. This one I could probably do quickly. So, this question is about elements in group 7 of the periodic table and their compounds, uh, bromine, Br2, sodium chlorides, SLCl2, and iodine monochlorides or ICL all have similar MR values. Um, suggested with reason the order of melting points of these three substances. So, that's an ionic compound. That is a, it has, this one has covalent character. Um, and then it's from just people and advanced molecular forces. So, I say I take the SLCO2 first, had the highest, has the highest melting point. Has the highest melting point of the free as it's, it's an ionic compound, so. But it's not just like just saying it's an ionic compound, I have to say a bit more than that. 
and it's because so SSCO2 is it, uh, has the highest melting point of the free as it's an ionic compound uh, forming a giant ionic crystal lattice I'd, I'd call it you can just call it a lattice forming highest melting point as it's an ionic compound For, yeah, forming an ionic lattice. I'm just trying to think about this here because, like, um, they're explaining it. Would they want me to say strong ionic bonds instead of saying that? I'll just say both. I'll say strong ionic bonds and having a strong lattice anyway. But, uh, well, okay, I'm just gonna go for strong ionic lattice. I'm gonna go straight how, how, how I would do it. If I'm wrong, I'll see the mark scheme anyway. Uh, so SOCO2 has the highest melting point as it's, it's an ionic compound forming ionic an ionic lattice. Ionic, sorry, ionic uh, crystal lattice. Those kind of like form a crystal, crystal solid. Um, forming a giant. Forming a giant ionic crystal lattice. Uh, with strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive SO2 plus ion and a negative ch negatively charged Cl minus ion. Um, yeah, so with I call them strong 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 electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive SO2 plus and negatively charged Cl minus ion. So then that's, that's, that's that done. Uh, why do I think ICL? Because ICL has, uh, it has the also. Oh, first, I want to say ICL has the second i the second highest melting point uh, due to some let's say due to some covalent character. So it, it, it forms a dipole, so forming a dipole or dipole dipole partial bond. Let's say a partial forming a partial dipole dipole. Interaction, yeah, between I minus and CR minus. I guess it'd be like that, really. Um, what would they be ions? Yeah, I think it would be ions. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just trying to read back to make sure I don't make any mistakes here, but definitely the easiest one out of three is like BR2 has the lowest melting point. Forming a... Weak, I said, when you say weaker, B2 
This has lost mass point of the free as it forms weaker van der Waals intermolecular forces. Alright, why an equation for the reaction of chlorine with cold water? Okay, we just, you know. So the reason why chlorine is added to drinking water is just the disadvantage of treating water in this way. Uh, chlorine is used to kill bacteria in water, I'll just say that. So chlorine just this one's you treating water in this way uh because well it's harmful because like the, the uh, high chlorine in high concentrations is toxic that's the real reason so chlorine in high concentrations is toxic What do they say specifically? I mean, you can also say that when it binds to like organic compounds, it's also because uh, uh, I remember when I did that video, I said when it binds with organic compounds um, or reacts with uh, organic compounds, it can form carcinogenic compounds. You could say that, I guess, but they should give that one, but. All I know for certain is that chlorine in high concentrations is toxic. Bromine reacts to phosphorus to form phosphorus tribromide. Write an equation for the reaction and draw the shape of the phosphorus tribromide molecule formed. Suggest a bond angle in phosphorus. Okay, so. So I know it's P4, right? Bromine, so it's it's four of that. That's twelve. So in six Br two, so six Br two plus four plus P four goes to form four P Br three. Yes, all right. This is in group five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so it should be trigonal pyramidal. Yeah, it should be trigonal pyramidal with a uh, lone pair. I wish I had a rubber with me a shape with the tiger rubber. Can I use that? I hate that long pair as well. Well, it has a lone pair in it, so it should have. So, done that part, done that part. Um, doesn't say name it, so yeah, just just do it. Bond angle, one hundred and seven degrees, because it's two point five degrees less. Because it's usually one hundred nine point five degrees, but then minus two point five degrees because of the the lone pair, which would cause it to pu push in. Because remember, the lone pair would equally uh, repel it. So, in all that in all directions and most as well. So. 107 degrees, degrees. Right. Phosphorus pentabromide is in in the solid state consists of PPr4 plus and Br minus ions. Draw the shape of the PPr4 plus ion 
I suggest this button and go up there. So we're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. For Thirty minutes left also to do this. So um, one, two, three, four. Answers are positive charge. So one, two, three, and this is, it's just going to be tetrahedral. So tetrahedral and then positive charge. Um, This is just tetrahedral. Again, they don't ask you to name it, just just to, to do it. Uh, also, this is a positive charge, so. A <laughs> uh, bond angle, um, I don't see a reason why it shouldn't be 109.5 degrees. So I'd say 109.5 degrees. Multiple choice questions. Not much left. Not much left. I remember, we still had one more we had to go back on. So, uh, yeah. So, which this question represents a, a, a reaction that doesn't. I can't speak. <sighs> which equation uh, represents a reaction that doesn't take place? CO two plus. That can happen. So that does take place. Right. That does take place. That can happen. Yeah. Just the first one. Which species is the best oxidizing agents, the best at being reduced? CO2. This question is about the chemical properties of chlorine, uh, sodium. Oh, I can't read. Sorry. This question is about the chemical properties of chlorine, sodium chloride, and sodium bromide. Sodium bromide reacts with uh, concentrated sulfuric acid in a different way from sodium chloride. Write an equation for the reaction of sodium bromide and explain why bromide ions react differently from chloride ions. Um, I can't just write the simple ionic equation here because you're trying to say how they react different here because when I use the ionic equation, it just shows they're acting in the same way. So I could write use the ionic equation to be fair. Well, I can answer the second part pretty much well, so I can say because the reason why um, bromide ions react in a different way to chloride ions because bromide ions are much bigger than chloride ions, so they have a weaker electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron. Uh, that makes it better at releasing that electron, makes them better uh, reducing agents, and so Br minus is, is like more easily oxidized. So that's why I'd go ahead and say so. Because that that remember that there's an extra electron shell with brom brom with bromide ions. So bromide ions are they're larger than the chloride ions. And they ha uh, and hence have a weaker electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron. And so B R minus. There's not a lot of spaces. So I've got too much needle, and so there's too much for this part here, and a warm up for that equation, I assume. And so B R minus is a better reducing agent. I 
Okay, this part here. Final equation for this reaction of sodium bromide. Same way sodium bromide. What well, does it? I can just say, in short, why can't I just do this? Plus, I'm just, I'm just. I've seen, I think I've seen the question like this before, and I didn't. I have seen right the question, but I remember doing this question. I did something like this, and I didn't get the correct answer, but I can't think of another one right now. So, if it's wrong, I'll look at the mask and see why it's wrong. But um, in case it is wrong. The ideas of this video is to show you my my mindset of going through these questions. For the majority of the, these questions, I know I've I've like um, I've done well in them. I'm just trying to show you my mindset when I'm going through these questions, what I think, how I do them. It's not about me necessarily getting them all hundred percent correct, but it's to show you that even though I don't get them all hundred percent correct, my mindset of going through them and how I make sure I maximize my marks. So colour solution contains a mixture of sodium chloride and, and sodium bromide at a time, 23 minutes or 24 minutes really. A colour solution contains a mixture of sodium chloride and sodium bromide using aqueous silver nitrate and, other, and any other reagent of your choice. Develop a procedure to prepare a pure sample of silver bromide from this mixture. Explain each step for the procedure and illustrate your explanation with equations where appropriate. So... Just reading it back again. Make sure sodium chloride, sodium bromide. So we're trying to prove basically that these, or this in particular, bromide ions, chloride ions are present. Uh, equation silver nitrate, develop a procedure to develop a pure sample of silver bromide. So you want to, no, no, you actually you just want to get pure this. So how am I going to get pure silver bromide? Okay, I can just use a concentrated ammonia in particular. Okay, so explain why each step in this procedure and illustrate your explanation with equations where appropriate. So we add nitric acid um, and silver nitrate to each mixture to form the silver salt precipitate. So, why I say that? We add nitric acid and uh, silver nitrate to each. What am I saying? So, it's because it's, it's, so, I keep going confused. It's a mixture. It's not separate. Uh, it's not separate test tubes here. I have to make sure you answer this question. Uh, you have to read this carefully again. So add nitric acid and silver nitrate um, to the mixture. As you can tell, it, it is really late at night right now. I'm very tired. Um, to form this, uh, to form the silver salt precipitate. To form the silver salt precipitate um, AgCl and the, the silver precipitates will be so AgCl and AgBr and then if I say you have to write it equations so silver nitrates plus um, sodium chloride goes to form silver chloride plus sodium nitrate silver nitrate plus sodium bromide goes to form AgBr plus sodium nitrate Um, we would then, if we want to make sure that, that we get the most out of uh, our passivities here, we would then, then add an excess volume of dilute ammonia, or dilute ammonia solution, as we say.
and when you do that, that would dissolve the AgCl. Uh, only so it only dissolve the AgCl precipitate. Um, so the as they so then add excess volume of dilute ammonia solution. Um, to the mixture to dissolve to. dissolve AGCL only. Oh, that's terrible handwriting there. AGCL only. Uh, and then if you want to, if you want, remember it, uh, you want to get pure sample of silver bromide. Um, use filter paper. to filter out AGBR and wash with distilled water. And you uh, and you'd uh, pat dry or say blot dry? No, no, they're precipitates. You'd uh, Pat dry with paper towel. In a real exam, you get more more, more space than this. All right. So, Ryan, I want equation for the reaction between chlorine and dilute sodium hydroxide solution. Give the oxidation state of chlorine in each of the chlorine um, containing ions formed. So, I, this is an ionic equation, not a normal equation. So. Uh, Chlorine and dilute um, sodium hydroxide. So I usually be um, Cl2 plus NaOH, but this time it would be um, Cl2. This is going from Cl2 to form 2 Cl minus plus 2 electrons. I'm going from Let's just do this first. So two Cl, so Cl two plus OH minus um, O Cl minus plus the Cl minus. Yeah, we just take out the H part. Uh, plus water, surely. Times this by time. Yeah, times that by two. So two OH is in. There's two negatives, yeah, because there are two negatives on this, so about two minus on either side, and it's also oxygens and the hydrogens are both, yes, all right. Uh, and give oxidation state of chlorine in each of the chlorine containing ions formed, so in the product, so, um, oxidation state of OCl minus. Was it of chlorine in so it'd be x minus two equals minus what x minus two equals minus one right x is equal to plus one and then cl minus is just equal to minus one uh yes that's it all right cool i put one how much you got yeah, 16 minutes to answer that question. See, even on a day where I'm very, very tired and moving very, very slowly, I'm still able to get 16 minutes. And if it was any more time, I'd probably get 20 minutes, really. Uh, that's that's why I would do. These aren't the, difficult, the, the most difficult questions that you'd get, but the general questions that you'd get. The general questions that you'd... more majority of the exam would be filled with questions like this, and there'll be some harder questions, some maybe easier questions in the exam, but generally they're like this. Um, so like, like in this paper so far, um, but yeah, the, the test I, I haven't finished it yet, so I should probably stop talking like as if I finished. All right, so a student was given a fifty gram uh, sample of sodium. Um, sorry, a student was given a fifty gram sample of solid silver chloride, uh, contaminated with solid silver carbonate. The student suggested the following method to obtain the maximum amount of.
pure drop. I can't. I need to. Yeah, I can't, I'm definitely. I'm definitely going to play straight after this, as you can clearly tell. Uh, a student was given a 50 gram sample of solid silver chloride contaminated with a solid uh, silver carbonate. The student suggested the following methods of obtaining the maximum amount of pure dry uh, silver chloride from the sample. Uh, tip the solid into a boiling tube, add dilute nitric acid, allow the remaining solids to settle or decant off the liquid, uh, leave the, the sample to dry on a shelf, identify any faults or omissions in the methods suggested by the student and suggest improvements to the method using the commonly available laboratory equipment. The following chemicals are also available, distilled water, dilute solutions of sodium hydroxide, NH3, HCl, HCl4. Right, okay, so this is a... This is quite a big question, so I'm glad that I actually skipped this question and went straight to the end because I would, I would have wasted a lot of time going through this question. So if you see multiple choice questions, just go and do those first, or, or easy spot, easy mark questions, go and do those first because this one just requires, it's you can do it, but you need to break it down. So first of all, I want you to identify, okay, so identify any faults or omissions in the industry, so any faults with this uh, thing here, so... Well, first of all, that's a lot of, 50 grams is quite, a lot of people don't think that's a lot, but that's quite a lot for a boiling tube. You're like, you know what, you know what a boiling tube looks like. So 50 grams for boiling tube is quite a lot. And yeah, I'll tell you, have to you feel, you have to make it into a solution. So as you add nitric acid uh, into that, so um, with your, with your, um, with, is, is it acid? It would be because we have solid um, silver chloride contaminated with um, silver carbonates. We need to get, get that to fizz off. So, um, yeah, he's just gonna—he's just trying to get um, silver chloride. So he's trying to use an acid to remove the, the silver carbonate here. Um, well, they're using nitric acid here, but how much acid? So I first of all I just do this, I do this in a beaker and it also use okay, so so how do I attack this question, right? So first of all I just say what the problems are. I'd say the boiling tube uh, is, is too small uh, for 50 grams uh, of the solid mixture of solid sample and nitric acid. Uh, I'd, I'd use a 250 milliliter um, beaker instead. Should be used instead. I also go on to say that nitric acid. Uh, so first of all, What's the nitric acid actually doing? And it's what it's doing is that it's just, uh, it's getting rid of the the soluble silver nitrate. So it's getting rid of the soluble silver carbonate to form silver nitrate. Uh, Well, they've given us HCl here, so I'd use HCl instead because you have sulfuric acid, but you, you have chlorine in this uh, this here. So I'd use, I, what I'd actually do is say, um, I'd say HCl3 is um, HCl, it will, will form a silver nitrate. 
so therefore, because he wants the maximum amount of the pure dry silver chloride, therefore we can't obtain. I wouldn't use this acid, I wouldn't use nitric acid, use HCl acid instead, which still does the same job and gives you the more, more uh, higher concentration or higher yield of sodium chloride, also of silver chloride. So we can't obtain the maximum yield of silver chloride. <sighs> Let's use HCl instead. Uh, as I said before, the, the, this like this kind of like it doesn't. It also doesn't tell you how much of the acid that we're using here. So, um, the method fails. Say the method fails to give measurements of volume of acid needed. Acid required, I should say. Fails to give the volume of acid required for the experiment. How much time do you have? Eight minutes and twenty-five seconds. Um, uh, add dilute nitric acid. Follow the remaining solid cell. What's mentioned here, sorry. Forming. No, I already have, I already said it here, sorry. My bad, I don't know why I wrote that there. We're trying to get rid of. Well, anyway, I, 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 just got, I, I think I've, I've said enough there, really. I've, I was trying to see if I could make it even, but at this point now, I just make... Another problem that there's there is that they're saying that they say they keep saying decant off the liquid, but that makes it sound like we're pouring out the liquid, like it, it has, that has like HNF3 mixed within it, which is like contam is, is a contamination. So I would... So, decant insinuates a contaminated beaker contaminated um, mixture or so I say solution of AGCL solid and nitric acid so all you really need to do here is that that um, all you need to do is just filter I, I just filter the uh, I'd filter using filter paper and then wash with a distilled water and then uh, to remove the so uh, to remove any soluble products or soluble impurities so um, instead filter with filter paper Uh, then wash with distilled water. To remove um, soluble impurities. Uh, 
All right, that's done now. Now I've left myself with five minutes, two seconds left. So I finished the paper with five minutes and two seconds to go over this paper. Now I would go over this paper and you should go over your paper to make sure you haven't made mistakes. However, there's no real reason to be honest. I'm just very lazy and I can't bother to go over it um, because I've kind of explained every, every little detail of it. Um, but I'll go for it still. No, I, I still go for the timer. Let the timer go. I'm thinking, now, should, I, should I use the mark scheme here? Okay, let me get my iPad out. I'm not gonna go review. You usually you'd go through to see if you made any small mistakes and all that, um, but this has been a very very long paper, and I'd usually go through it. I, this is, you know, what? I'm saying a bad example by not going and actually reviewing it. Just kind of go right over it. Make sure to answer every question. I've answered every question. So you know what, I'd, I'd, I'd probably do the mark scheme in a separate video. Should I do that as, instead? Yeah, I'd do that in a separate video. I'll, I'll make that video next. I'm just way too tired right now. I am so tired right now, like going through all this in the mark scheme. I'll go through that separately. So, uh, hopefully this video was helpful. And like, if you need, if you didn't answer how to answer a question, I'm actually going through to see if the if this if it aligns with the mark scheme. I'm just way too tired. The, the video for that will be coming right after this anyway. But the next video after that, if you want me to go through the mark scheme and explain how I got through all of that. But for now, that's it. Hopefully this video was helpful, and I'm done. I'm way too tired. I should have done this during the day.